Good morning, everybody. I am Bart Winkler. Welcome into the Winkler verse. We've got Graham Pills. We've got Paul Imig, both who you can see their beautiful faces on the Dan Shaney YouTube stream. He's my insurance agent. Why the hell isn't he yours yet? Uh, a couple news and notes. Brewers got a win where they had like seven home runs. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Come on. Paul, it's like a two-hour game. Just skip through it. You're all good. But uh, that would have been a good one to take the kid at. He likes to see Bernie down the slide. Yes. Packer schedule, I think is. I think we have it. Kyle Cousinow just tweeting it. I do take his word on these schedules. Yes, he's good at this. Um, I saw. My, I'm on this text chain where you know we want to go to a trip. We've gone to all the road games, so it's either an NFC North team or LA. And but we've seen the Rams before, but that was in St. Louis. Wait, have, so. What about Tennessee? Did you say that? We've been to Tennessee. We've oh. been to Jacksonville. We've been to Seattle. And we're not going to Brazil. Yeah. So. Xenophobes. We, we will probably go to Los Angeles, which collectively a lot of us thought, oh, these bigger trips we'll take when we're older and more secure. Sure. But now we're all like older and like. A flight to California? Jesus Christ. It's like so oh. far away. LA traffic? Oh, my God. Ooh, really? We should have went there when we were younger. <laughs> um, But then I have one buddy. He, he, like, sent us a message at 11. He goes, got the schedule, guys. I look. I don't recognize this Twitter account. I type it in. It's some guy who tweeted a text message to himself, the tweet had 197 views. It's like, well, how did you find this? <sighs> but that's that's what schedule release day is. I will um, be breaking down the win loss with Ryan Horvat at a time very soon. I don't want to get too much into this because I have three questions I'm really excited to talk to you guys about. So let's do like the one minute version of schedule release day is dumb. Just wait till seven o'clock mm -hmm, or mm -mm. well, it's dumb because we've waited five months. And then all of a sudden, <clears throat> like today and, and they're it's just like it's 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 a it's a bunch of. Like we are we are uncovering this big secret, which. It's not, it's all theater. It's all like source theater. Mm -hmm. Like, look what I just discovered. I just discovered this. Oh, I found it. I got the treasure map. I went and found the, you know, immunity idol. It was under the tree. The mm. Packers and the Rams are playing week five. It's like, well, how do you just know? I mean, what what is what is happening here? And and what are you doing? You're like you're like you're waking up at eleven, knowing the schedule is going to come out at seven. So if this is something you want to do, what are you doing? You're you're digging through flight logs. You're calling sources in the Dolphins. Like where are you traveling? Like this, it's just so much work for what's the payoff? Knowing you know, information slightly earlier than we would have known it anyways. That's the payoff. This is why I don't. This is why I don't like insider culture i brought this up on my show if you are a journalist that uncovers something that wasn't going to be uncovered like that's that's brave that's that's powerful and moving that's important but some of these insiders is like i want to be the one to tweet something out 15 minutes before we're going to learn it anyways like i don't know what's the point now if you tweet this stuff out during the midday show uh, the one that i produce i mean i'll take the content yes i will i'll partake but it's but not it's necessary the same, it's the same concept though then is like Woj knows the draft pick 40 seconds before it's on TV. Oh, right. That's the worst. Like what's that's, the, that's what's, the worst. That's the worst of all is what's tipping the value picks here. What's 60 the, seconds early. Just, yeah. just because you can, that's why they do it. That's the value. Yeah, to show that they can. Yeah. Power, power money, first. sex, especially with Woj. That's all we want Ooh. in this world is power, money, and sex. How's that for an opening? PMS, I call it. I think you just We're stumbled in. PMSing. Into... Yeah. All I want is PMS. All right. All right. Um, I won't ruin any other afternoon baseball games, Paul. Go, go ahead. Oh, um, thanks, bud. 
Um, starting with Bucks adjacent, Dante DiVincenzo would not have been this good had he just stayed with Milwaukee. Mm-hmm. Or mm-mm. Well, let me uh, ponder on that one first. Great question. Thank you. Because I excited to hear your thoughts and excited to share mine. Go ahead. Well, I like to talk about Draymond Green a lot. That they got the best version of him. Yeah, <clears throat> like the, the the best version of Draymond Green ever in the NBA is him getting drafted to that team and them needing him and him needing them and, and that whole thing. Yes. Um, I don't think there's another. I don't think there's. But then to that point, if that's in him, like if if that skill is achievable, then it's always in you. So for Dante, this, this Dante, it, it could have been like, it could have been there always, but what culture fosters this version of Dante? Right. And maybe, I, I mean, I, I'm going to go with a real soft. Mm, <laughs> mm, yeah. Mm. yeah. I, I mean, maybe my, my instinct just instinctually is probably not. That he would not have been this good had he just stayed. Yeah, I think uh, the journey, bouncing around four teams in two years, mm-hmm. is the reward. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that playing alongside Steph maybe helped a little bit. Well, that's where I'd like to interject really quickly because they said on the broadcast of Game Three or Four that Dante had credited his three point shooting change not just his percentage change but like the process of his shot and the form of his shot to Steph Curry he would not have had that experience he would not have played with some of the guys he's played with had the experiences he's had so you can literally trace it back at least is in the one case of his three-point shooting to playing with Steph Curry now none of this changes the fact that yeah I think the Bucks lost the Dante for Ibaka trade I'm pretty sure mm -hmm, on that one (laughs) <laughs> but would he have, would he have been this good had he just stayed in Milwaukee? My answer is emphatically mm-mm. not only because of the journey and the path and the different coaches and players he's played with along the way, but I really think there's something to this Villanova trio. Yeah. Josh Josh Hart is like oh there you go. You hear that? Oh, I hear that. Hang up. Who is it? It's my friend Travis. Shove it, Travis. We're talking Dante. Is he is he calling your cell phone? Because you know there's a switch on the side. He's calling. This is coming through my computer. Okay, that makes sense then. And I don't know how to turn that off. Does he know not to? I mean, he's a he calls you randomly on a on a. Well, random, he's the time. only friend that still calls me. Like that I we know, talk. I know, I know better. <laughs> So all of this to say, the Bucks lost the Dante trade. He's calling about the schedule. He's calling about travel. Oh, yeah. So yeah. they lost the they lost the trade to with Ibaka. Mm-hmm. He would not have been this good had he stayed in Milwaukee. So my question was for you, Grant. Dante would not have been this good. Well, I, I just want to say one yeah, more please. thing too: is he okay. would probably have been traded later on. Yeah, but like if you right now, or you just say, "Hey, we, we will clear out our." Okay, so let's do the let's do the the trade. Bobby Pat number twenty three and number thirty three for Dante. You would do that as the Bucks, mm-hmm, or mm-mm. now no, this will no, never no no. So you wouldn't now you wouldn't now that he is this version of Dante. Now you're fast forwarding to present day, and he is in fact this good. Is he not like exactly the guy that you the type of player? Well, to to do a preview of the uh, Bucks roundtable that me, Jim Ozarski, Bart Lundy, and Dario Melendez, who Bart's, uh, have done taped, and it will air Saturday at six thirty and ten thirty on WISN twelve. Set your DVRs, or better yet, watch it live. Mm. Um, Coach Lundy says, you know, the way that Doc Rivers used Portis could be advantageous to his future in Milwaukee. He liked the way that he was used. He also liked, uh, let me tell you this little tidbit. Oh, on the show, I say, we talked about running it back and I say, I think you need to run it back, but, and you need to drill in like, this is your last chance. You need a, 
you need to create urgency with this group of veterans because mm. they don't have it. And then in the parking lot later, he said, you know, that was a good thing. That was a good line you said about urgency. And I said, I, hey, Gottlieb's in your conference. I'm coming for your job, sir. <laughs> anyway, we have fun here. Um, but what he would like, if if the Dame trade happened when the Suns have been like, well, fuck, uh, Grayson, uh, we'll take Dante. We don't want this piece of shit. Maybe. I don't well, know. I just feel like, I feel like at some point he would have been traded. But then also we thought Bobby and Pat would have been traded five different times by now. Yeah. Well, but yeah, and clearly now at this point, though, the trade value of Dante way up here, the trade value of Bobby and Pat way down here, like Bobby and Pat, I don't think are assets in the in the trade market. I think they're maybe neutral assets. They could maybe get them for another type of a Bobby or a different guy of a Pat. But like, they're not like, oh, like what, what can you like when people say like, oh, I, I wonder what they can really turn around and get for Bobby. I'm like, fucking nothing. Like you, you can get another guy another body but you're not getting value man <laughs> like dante has uh, he's really playing well um but he would not have been this good had he just stayed is my opinion grant bills dante would not have been this good had he just stayed in milwaukee mm -hmm. or mm -mm. i think he probably benefited from playing by steph curry yeah and i think right now he's definitely benefiting by playing with his Villanova guys. I, th I think, I think those two things, these two stops have really helped his game. Both. I think the biggest. True. Yeah, yeah. Well, and let me throw in a third. Ooh. I also think a third thing can be true. I think the biggest issue between Giannis and the bucks was just timing. I, I think, a I think a big part of it was timing. He wasn't healthy on their title run. If he would have been healthy and would have been a part of that, who knows? Maybe he's not traded because he's thought of as this maybe not a pillar, but at least a brick, not a cornerstone, but a brick, a foundational brick of a championship team, some yeah. sort of brick. Yeah. Um. I, I don't know. Like if the Bucks don't win the title, is Bobby still here? We think of him as a big piece of why they won that title. So just a point of comparison. Sure. I think the biggest issue with Dante and the Bucks was timing. And if he stayed here this whole time, maybe he wouldn't be this good of a three point shooter. Maybe he wouldn't be the, the type of attitude and the type of player that he is next to Jalen Brunson and Josh Hart. But I think he could be 80% of what he is now, at least. Yeah, And a guy that can get hot from three and play defense and bring some toughness and attitude and play above the rim, like we'd kill for that guy. So yeah, I think for the most part, mm -hmm, I think he, I think he would still be really good. The bucks and, and him just didn't work out for timing reasons. We, we've all had a, uh, a crush in our past, Bart, you know, you talked about, think about your time at UWL where it's like, you know, me and me and her, we never, he's never on the same page. I always seemed like maybe that might happen. Willy won't he, you know, type of situation. And and you look back and you're like it was it was just timing it just didn't work out for us you know back then I think I think Dante and the Bucks it's very similar I do remember the conversation at the time was Bucks fans were essentially having I never, to I never had that problem I, my, my timing was always now let's do it <laughs> it was basically the choice was like keep Dante or keep uh, Grayson. Do you remember this? Like, this was the topic. No, if I'm being honest, I don't really remember well, that. that I mean, Dante was injured during the championship run. Uh, PJ Tucker doesn't come back. Grayson Allen comes like it. You, yeah, it, it was for, for those who are listening and will, re will remember that. Like, it wasn't a literal, like, hey, you can only have one, but from a front office perspective, it was, it was kind of like, and perhaps incorrectly. But it was certainly framed as like, well, you keep you keep Dante or you keep Grayson long term, and I'll I'll admit, like at the time, I was like, well, no, Grayson is the knockdown, long range, stretch the floor shooter that you need more so than the slashing Dante, which is more what he was known for then. Now he's a lot more of a versatile player. Do we uh, do we think that this is the new Dante, or do we think he's having a, a heck of a series? Is this a moment or a movement? Yeah, Pert. Thank you, thank you. And and, and even if it is just, a, a, a I think movement. it's a, I think it's a movement. And even if it is just a moment, it's a great moment, and I'm not taking away from it. But tell me that was a mini can, Paul. It is. Oh my God! I was like, your that your hands are not that big. Pick it up again. I was like, you got Andre the Giant, man. It's like, oh my God. <laughs> All right, a uh, little yeah. Dan Shaney YouTube action right there. Just some video hijinks. That's just some great. Video hijinks. Yeah. But I do think this. I think Dante has reached the absolute 100% possibility outcome of his talents because of 
where he's played because of the Steph Curry teammate part of it, because he's playing with his Villanova guys, he has reached like the maximum outcome. Any Dante believer in college could have hoped he would ever achieve when the Bucks drafted him. He has reached it and there's nowhere else to go. Like this is as good as he could have possibly turned out to be. Um, and he's fun. He's fun to watch. It's fun to watch. The Knicks are um, really fun to watch. I will okay, co-sign so, that. Let me, I'll just say this real quick on, on the Knicks. They are my, te- I'm realizing this. They're my team. Like they're not, it's not even like, I should like the Timberwolves more. I should like the Thunder more. I'm enjoying their, like, I like watching their games, but I watch. Timberwolves the- really letting me down, man. Those motherfuckers. I know. I w- but I'm watching the Knicks. Like it's such a perfect blend of the exact type of team I want to watch. The exact type of basketball I want to watch playing against the type of team that I just hate. You know, everything about the Pacers. Um, so it's a wonderful time to watch this series. Um, but I do think they'll win. But, okay. Well, it's nice after Pacers and Pacers win at home and then the Knicks yeah. win at home. That seems like what's going to happen. I Denver's so. probably got this wrapped up. Chuck uh, texts me after game two. He's like, dude, you might be on it with Minnesota. And I said, Freems, you got to listen to me. I know ball. I know playoff basketball. When I'm right, I'm right. Yeah. And then Denver comes back and Jokic, who I just, you know what? I'll just admit it. I don't like him. I don't like him. I don't like, I don't like where he places historically. I don't like how we all like this whole bit about the horses. I think it's, I think it's lame. I think disgruntled guy. I think I don't like the bit. I don't like the act. I don't like the one instance that I had in a post game uh, locker room with him that uh, has affected me to this day. Mm-hmm. I don't like that he stole an MVP from Giannis. I don't like him. Yes. Which one? 22. Well, here, with the MVP thing, just 30 seconds, not even. Like, Jokic's progression of winning MVPs followed the progression it should. You win one, great. You win another, awesome, great. But now you're in a different class, so we need to see you do it on a higher level before you're considered again. And then he won a title, and he was considered again. And I just don't know why Giannis didn't get the same treatment because he's been brilliant the last two years. And it's not that he's not winning. He's not a serious MVP candidate at all. Yeah. Like he's not even in, consi- he's not even in the conversation, right? He like was, he's getting he's fifth place. Coach killer. So Giannis, he was at swimming again. Yeah. I, I feel like, I feel like this is a massive deal. It is. I just go to my kids swimming and I just see Giannis and he just is a normal dad. And he's allowed to be a normal dad. Like, I didn't see anyone go up and take his picture. I'm sure everybody, you know, if Giannis came up to you and says, would you want my picture? I'd, yes. But everyone's just like, you know, it's Giannis. I'm going to text all my, you know, everyone's on their phone texting, Giannis is here. And, you know, maybe take a shitty picture. I showed my son. I go, hey, there's Giannis because he knows Giannis. And mm-hmm. um, he said, oh, is he still hurt? Oh. And I I said, uh, I don't know. I think they, I think they protected him because. Jimmy Haslam knew they were going to lose. Um, That's what you told your son. Is he familiar <laughs> with the the angle that Jimmy Haslam brought to the ownership? Yeah, the whole group? pilot J. He's familiar okay. with all that. He's, he's, he's familiar see, Grant, with- these are the things you'd understand. You will understand one day. You just tell him all about the ownership, like hierarchy and the governorship of your favorite basketball. I was going to say ownership is leading language that we. Yeah. Let's well, the other day, about. the other day I was at the park with him again. He's four, and I was telling him that you know, trickle down economics does yeah. not work. And then he was, he presented this whole case study on how it does. Really? So, yeah. He's very, very affluent and very uh, familiar with the ways of the day. I'll tell I you what form of economics does work is that that's me giving you a promo code and then you I using know. it wow. at happyplacehemp.com. The promo cool. code is BART. Now make sure you use it because Austin, who told us the other day, he said he ordered drunk and forgot to put the code in. So he paid the normal price, which again is lower than it was because of the savings. But I said, hey, if you do that, man, I'll I, I can get you that discount. Promo code's Bart, 25% off every order at happyplacehemp.com. Seltzers, gummies, balms, tinctures, all of that stuff with the THC or the CBD or the CBN or the whatever you need. If you're gonna order it drunk, just put it in your cart. Wake up the next day, then look at it. Make sure you've put the promo code in there. You can also check them out in Muskego, happyplacehemp.com. The following two trios 
NBA trios. I want to know which one you would rather have for next season and next season only. Mm. This is only for the consideration of the 2024-25 NBA season. Dame, Chris, Brooke, or Jamal Murray, Aaron Gordon, Michael Porter Jr. Dame, Brooke, and Chris, Jamal, Aaron Gordon, and Michael Porter Jr. You would rather have the Bucks trio. Mm-hmm. Or mm-mm. It's a good question. Thank you. I didn't get what you were going for at first, but now I right. no, he's, now you're now you're there. We're talking SCs supporting casts. Mm-hmm. I like this. Is this around Giannis? Not around Giannis? Just in general? This is what you get. You get this trio and Jokic and Giannis not part of the equation. You know what, I, guys? Hit it. Dame's gonna come back stronger than ever. Mm-hmm. Dame's the best player of those six. Absolutely, he is. I'm taking that. Me too. Mm-hmm. Grant. Mm-hmm. That was going to be my logic is best player. I I think Aaron Gordon, although Jesus Christ, he's looked like Kobe the last couple it's, games. Like it's some unbelievable. of the yeah. shooting out of his rear end. I think Chris Dame Brooke, I think I would I think I would take that trio. Yeah. Dame yeah. has showed for a long time that he's more consistent because theoretically we're navigating a regular season with this trio as well, right? Yeah. I mean, Dame has been more reliable over long sample sizes than Jamal Murray. Jamal Murray's point is like, right, he levels up in the postseason. Against Dame has shown that he can. Lakers specifically. In yeah, the, mostly in, against the Lakers. In the final 10 seconds of halves and quarters. Jesus. I don't know why, by the way, but that half-court shot that Jamal Murray made was made infinitely cooler with the camera angle of Kevin Harlan. Like, I don't know what it oh, is about. Oh, you do know why. It was awesome. Because I, I don't know what it is, but Kevin Harlan being on video let me, let me just tell you something. When I was at Radio Row for the Super Bowl, not to bring this up, there were there were no people. The Super that, Bowl, well done. The Super Bowl. Mm. There were no people that I ran into or talked to or engaged with where I was starstruck, except for Bobby Flay. But he's not even in sports, so that doesn't count. <laughs> the one person I swear to God, he, Kevin Harlan walks into Radio Row, and it's like Jesus arrived. Like the horde of people, like the personality and the aura of that man. I've never seen it before. So like that call, just to see him in the frame, like to see him at work, that was, that was very cool. And I, I want more shots like that where we get, and I know it happened right in front of the table, but yeah, that was cool. That was really cool. I take the Bucks trio though. Mm -hmm. That's a, that's a jump off the, for me, it was a jump off the couch moment. Like, whoa, like what the fuck? You know, like, cause not only the, the terrible inbounds pass down the court, the steal, the clock running out, the shot, it goes in, he's in front of the announcer's table. That is like very hard to replicate in professional sports. That and, moment. That and, moment. And it was yeah. arguably, you tell me, like it was arguably like the most important 90 second stretch of totally. the series because the Wolves were totally. right there and they had just gotten a couple stops, which are so hard to come by. And it's like, all right, we're going to go into halftime and it's going to be right there. And then Denver has this flurry that's yeah. punctuated by the shot. It was just, yeah. So Jamal Murray can do that. But I've also seen Chris Middleton do things and make shots very similar to that in big moments. Normally they're not rewarded with wins, right? Like the shot in Boston or the one against Indiana, but I think I would take the Bucks trio. Yeah. Well, it's not like you haven't seen Dame, not that he's made a half court shot in front of Kevin Harlan necessarily, but I mean, hell Dame time was born because of shots similar to that. at the Bad shots. That's a bad shot. We should point out and like, I would think this would be a fun, actually, you know what? Can I have a, I'll give it during the playoffs. A Bartometer suggestion: Remove the each each sixteen playoff team's best player, and who has the best supporting cast trio just underneath the star. So, I mean, it's Jay, not hard. It's not hard. We've got we've got to see that in a lot of these series. Like that's yeah, that, totally. that is that the is, Cavs again, <laughs> the Heat, the Bucks. The heat, yeah. the Bucks. It's a great it's a great topic, and I'm not trying to poo poo it. But as you as you're saying it, it's like shit. We've we've been watching this for the last three weeks. Yeah, yeah, it's fair. It's fair. Um, so I the, want to do a Bardo meter about like with all these. I might rank the streaming services. <laughs> do you have, but uh, is your network like connected to any of them that you need to? Yeah. Where you need to tread lightly. I don't think so. Not Paramount think. Plus maybe. I don't think. Is so. Paramount Plus not related to you anymore? 
We have no TV connection. Oh, it's totally set. Okay. That I know of. I mean, it's Max, right? It's Max and Peacock. You like I don't, Peacock? the ones I watch the most are Peacock and Disney. I think Peacock, Peacock doesn't. Peacock's excellent only because, job. but but Grant, that's only because for Bart because of wrestling. Now and then also Marvel. But you watch them on Peacock. What wrestling? Oh no, I was. I thought you were saying Marvel. No, I'm watching. I didn't. I haven't seen X Men '97 yet. I'm starting with the old cartoons. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then I watched the Daredevil with Ben Affleck that they just put on there, and that was fucking bad. Yeah, don't watch that. Holy shit, was that bad? We're two months away from Deadpool and Deadpool and Wolverine. Very another excited. another Ryan Reynolds snarky, sarcastic movie. I wonder how this one will be. Can we not, Grant? Okay, I'm sure it'll be great. Can we not with this with this take, nonsense? Take, just so sick of his st- shtick. So yeah, but but like, but yeah. but everyone like, but no one is though. How? That's what I I'm know. wondering. I agree. He he's got a new movie. What? Not Fall Guy. Which one is it? Where he if. just if he's just the frazzled adult sarcastically reacting to chaos around him. That's every fucking movie he's ever been in. And I get like, look, a lot of actors like Co- Kevin Costner is the same person in everything he's ever been in. I I get it. It's just. I don't know he can do baseball in a western. What I guess Ryan Reynolds doing a superhero movie, whatever. I'm but, in the minority on this. It's fine. It's fine. But specifically, though I like Ryan Reynolds movies, Deadpool is just elite superhero movie dumb. Sure. Sure, sure, sure. I and agree. A great I, I I'm not into movie franchises or films in general, but uh my significant other and I are watching the Planet of the Apes movies from the beginning and those kick ass god those are good now you're saying the originals or like the ones that restarted with james franco no the james it's the one that starts with james franco which is the best which which is the best one of the new i i'm saying that the james franco one is the best one of the new ones Mm -hmm or mm -mm. it's rated the best i believe on either the first or the second one is rated i was looking at rotten tomatoes i've only seen the first two i want to get into uh kong and uh, godzilla franchise i guess yeah i got to get into that fuck yeah you do and it's it's the same with the new jurassic world movies it's like oh are those any good i don't know who cares all i know is dinosaurs going nuts all i know is i saw godzilla give an overhead suplex to king kong in the middle of the fucking desert what what do you ask what more do you have to ask for Dude, in the Godzilla Kong where he comes up on the aircraft carrier from underwater and then Kong is jumping to and from the aircraft carriers fighting. Oh. What was the new um which is which is the Jurassic Park where there's like a bunch of rich people trying to sell dinosaurs like number, they're number the Jurassic daughter World. and taken? Like what yep, the yep, fuck yep. is this? Jurassic World 2. Yeah. It's, it was like it was like taken. And it was good. Cause all the di- cause there were dinosaurs, Bart. That's why it was good. Is because the I dinosaurs- liked back in the 90s. I liked the Lost World. I liked that they went into San Diego and fucked some shit up. I did too. A lot of people shit on that movie. I don't think the movie was very good, but I loved the concept where they had brought them over into the mainland, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And we had the video game, very grainy. Did you play? um... I have the Sega game right upstairs. You do. When are we doing this? Friday night. So grainy, Grant. You would... uh... Yeah, I saw well, the, the I saw the original Jurassic Park in the movie theater at probably too young of an age. I remember my dad calling and being like, "So if I brought my young son along, what '90s movie movies movie do you remember in the theater?" Okay, let's hear. Sorry, it. Grant. Hit it. I'll fuck myself. You guys, Grant, go just ahead. Say, Grant you can just uh, go Titanic ahead. twice. I saw Titanic once in the theater. Blank check. Oh hell yes! Forget Paris. Which one is that? Billy Crystal's a ref. No, I don't think so. Oh, in the NBA, he's a ref. We thought it was going to be an NBA movie. Hmm. Jurassic Park, I know. American That's... Pie, I saw. Yeah. But I was front row, and I had to lie to my parents about what I actually saw. <laughs> uh, Fern you know, Gully, you know, I went for a field trip. Fern Gully, yes. By the way, you know Blink-182 was an American Pie? Oh, sure. Mm-hmm. That's all I can think of at the top of the my head. The Lion King had a box office of 968 million in the 90s. Man. Oh yeah, big movie. Yeah. Saw that when I was little. Not in theaters though. Do you guys cry at the end of Toy Story? I do. Not loudly, but like it's it's ha- it happens when they're it's flying. Toy Story is it 3? Toy Story 3 is not allowed in this house. Why? Too sad. 
It is really sad. I'm not. It's kidding. not as it's not as stirring as the we're not flying. This is falling with style, and it's just Tim Allen. God, Tim Allen just makes everything that he's in. I I hate that our world has tried to leave him behind. It, it's not possible to leave him behind. He's too relevant, but everyone's trying so hard, and it makes me sad. Yeah, Anywho. I am pro Tim Allen as well. Mm-hmm. Yes, Bar. How about um, Days of Thunder? No, didn't see it. No, in theater. No. How how old were you when you saw Jerry Maguire for the first time? Um, I think it was. I don't think I saw it when it came out. No. Okay. Glenn Fry was in uh, Jerry Maguire, right? Glenn Fry. Remind me who that is. Eagles. The guy from the Eagles. The late Glenn Fry. Yeah. All right. What else you got? All right. Riveting. riveting. So yeah. I know we. I know we kind of pivoted off of the trio thing, but the only the only argument for the Nuggets trio. Well, so Bart, hey, we, we rearranged all our schedules to talk to have that conversation. Hey, it was good. I was interested. I was interested. Um, <laughs> let's. What do you think about the the Bartometer topic though of best supporting cast trios? Because I'm like, too I want to work too much. Wanna, too much I'll, to talk about. You know what? I'll do what I normally do for your fucking Bartometers and just do it myself and send it to you. Okay. <laughs> I don't care. Uh, it is a machine, so I don't, you know, I know how it I'll works. plug it in the I, machine. I, I've seen a lot of uh, takes from Bucks fans. It's like, why can't Giannis's supporting cast play like Jokic's? And at first I was like, yeah, it's bullshit. But then I thought about it a little bit. It's like, man, Pat Connaughton did hit a bunch of threes and Bobby Portis. Like I was trying to think if I was a Suns fan and I was cheering for my team in that finals, would I have been pissed that some of these role players came out of nowhere to make? I feel like I would have. So I feel like this idea that the Bucks supporting cast has always been horrible. Like, I, I don't know. I don't know. I just see a lot of that from Bucks fans when we watch the Nuggets. I don't know if you guys have seen that. Yeah, I've not done the list yet, and nor that neither has the Bartometer, and those two things are totally connected. But I do think the Bucks, like Brooke, Dame, Chris Trio, like having not done it yet, I'm guessing that will be top five. Mm. Like, I mean, Boston's gonna be one, I think, by a, a run. Should away. they be? Yes. Sure. All right. Without their top star. Well, that's the I, thing with Boston. You take out their top star. It doesn't I, really change a lot, does it? Do they really change that much without I don't think so. the ball? Probably move better. Probably. All right. I'm just not. I'm just not that. I'm not a Tatum guy at all. Yeah, I'm not either. Bart. By the way, one thing that I thought is interesting as you hopefully annihilate Indiana and the Pacers on your show again coming up. Hopefully after Game Six, but probably after Game Seven. I have a, a Hawks fan buddy um, who like when the Bucks and the, the Hawks series with the Bucks in the Eastern Conference Finals, the assumption was, oh, they're going to be back. Like this is a young Hawks team. They're going to be back. Right. And I was like, I wouldn't be so sure, man. Like it's hard to get back. The Suns, they're up 2-0 in the final. Yeah, nobody else thought that. I, I mean, there was I think there was reason for optimism with the Hawks three years ago. Not that they would like just, oh, we'll be back to the Eastern Conference Finals. But like, and then the Suns. They're up 2 0 in the finals, and oh, well, you know, that really sucked, but we'll be back. Now they're losing in the first round despite having an, a better star player than what they did in that series. My point is, is when Indiana loses, if there's any like sentiment of like, oh, don't worry, the Pacers are young, they're going to come right back and be right back to this point next year, and then they'll be better. Bullshit. It's really hard to just, oh, we'll just be right back to this spot. You probably won't. Like the chances are historically that you won't be back to this spot. Like this is your chance. And if you, don't capitalize against the Knicks team that's missing all three of its like, I mean, definitely two of its four, five best players, three of its six best players. You're healthy except for Matherin, and you're gonna okay. Anyway, I hate the Pacers. I love the Knicks. Last uh, last one I had prepared for you. Uh, Hot take. Jake had a tweet. Hmm. A trade idea. It was a three team trade. Um, and I told, I just quick sent him a, a tweet and I just said, Hey, I'm going to save this for, mm -hmm. got some feedback from a guy who is going to be listening to this. I think, I don't know him personally, but I appreciate the back and forth that we had. He was not happy about the topic, but I said, just hear me out. Let's try it. Um, essentially the trade was though, there were three teams involved that the bucks get drew holiday and the bucks lose Chris Middleton. That was like the root of it. So the pushback from, from this listener, uh, who enjoys your pod Bart, um, 
was like, oh, let's not revisit like the should they have traded Chris? Like that wasn't possible with bird rights. I said, no, no, I, I know. But go into the 2024-25 season. Are you better with Dame, Giannis, Drew, and Brooke? Or are you better with as it currently stands? Interesting. So if there was some three-team hot take Jake Trey that made its way into the universe for real, and it ended with the Bucks only giving up Chris, the Bucks only getting Drew with other players going elsewhere. Um, mm-hmm or mm-mm that the Bucks would do would be better if they did that. Mm-hmm or mm-mm. I want Bart to answer first. I just want to say, Paul, there was really no trade scenario that was going to interest me that you could possibly throw out in this pod. This one, this is this is fun. This is interesting. Oh, I didn't good. I didn't know where this was going, but I you have my you have That's my interest. Two topics. You didn't know the one that with, with the trio thing, and then I got you on that after after the trio's good one. All what right, so he, think, wants, he wants you to start, Bart. Uh, I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't think. I don't want. I don't want. I don't want, I don't want to answer. I don't want. I don't. Want, I don't want the words to come out of my mouth. Uh oh. Do you think it's yes? It's it's fine. We're not trading anybody. It's just it's a yeah. thought experiment. That that's exactly that's what I said. He's so like, oh, then, is. just think of if. So what do you like? What's the roster? If they don't have Middleton, who's playing there? Just answer me that. And Andre J Ajax. Okay, so then, and then Drew would take over the Pat Bev spot. Yeah, the the Malik Beasley spot. You know, whatever. Okay. Yeah. So Dame, Drew, Ajax, Giannis, and Brooke. Mm -hmm. I mean, that seems better to me. Mm -hmm. Now you have a guy who actually defends. Yeah, you have a great defensive center in Brooke. A great defensive whatever he is in Giannis Unicorn. A great defensive wing. I wish Drew would have been like. I don't want to go to Boston. I'm going to hold out. This sucks. This, Would have been. Don't don't do this to Bucks fans. You can't do Would this. Have been to badass. Fans. You realize he was in Portland for a few days. He was Beautiful. like get get me. Well, sure. Well, maybe maybe if guy wasn't talking about how he was going to retire in 18 months and then signs a four year contract. He did do that. That was that was annoying. And I, I know it's like okay, he's being honest. We want our athletes to be honest. Yes, we do. But also, it, I also want them to be realistic. Like right. Like, remember when my uh, station went bye-bye? No, I don't remember that. What happened? And could you imagine if I was, like, put up a huge stink about it? Like, Bart, you're not the first person this has happened to. Meanwhile, the holidays are like, whoa. We were on we were on this team, and, not, and now, we're, now we have to play on... Is this allowed? Trade? What? Mm. It's like, guys, yeah, you got traded. What the fuck? I mean, it, as someone who has called the post office and the DMV just to try to get a new driver's license sent to my apartment, which is a very simple address, like it would be a massive pain in the cock to get traded. But also, <laughs> oh, like, yeah. Oh, I don't want to get traded. But also, like the NBA teams, they have people to help this. Like they probably have people to call the DMV in the post office. And this is going to sound like things. really. Yeah, like, like uh, Pat Bev's got Roan. This will sound like a very backwards take and it will be misinterpreted by some, I'm sure. You can trade me if you're giving me thirty million dollars a year. Sure, that's what the like, money's for. Like, I know that sounds like, but I'm just telling you, I I don't want. I don't know, man. Like, I don't, have to go deal with I, all I don't listen. But you, but you know what will get me to be okay with it? Thirty million dollars, Chris for Drew this off season. This is a hypothetical. We're not proposing this. This is well, just for discussion purposes. Which which player makes the current Bucks better? I think if Chris is out of the equation, and I think for for this situation, we have to just assume health, right? Like I don't I don't want to him haw about. Sure. Well, th there's an eighty percent chance Drew will be healthy versus whatever. The skill set that Chris has, he's so comfortable with Giannis, and he's such a good facilitator mm -hmm. when Dame has to come off the court, for example. Like he just helps everyone else be better. He does set others up. So if you subtract him, like that's. There's a, it's not just that you're taking him off the floor. You're taking some some pretty good impacts that he has. I think you can replace Drew. Like, if you want someone to play better defense, just start Andre Jackson Jr. instead of Malik Beasley. Mm. You're not getting trustworthy shooting out of Drew anyways. You know what I mean? It's it's not like Drew is Clay Thompson. He can give you a little bit of offense, but it's nothing that I trust. It's nothing that's consistent. So I, I feel like you can get Drew Holiday traits from other players. I don't know who you plug in to do some of the things that Chris Middleton can do. And like Chris isn't like out there like, 
Now Damon Giannis both have to be healthy all the time and they have to be amazing. Like the chemistry has to be yeah. a 10 out of 10. They have to be, which could happen. It totally could next year. In fact, I'd probably bet on it because I think both of them are pretty motivated to get it done, but I, I would rather have Chris. Can I, yeah. uh, and I'm, by the way, I'm not definitive. Like, and grand, that was the best argument you could have said to make me reconsider because the value of Chris's offense is a more valuable skill than perimeter defense. Mm-hmm. You know, so that that makes sense, but I don't know. Um, they're they're both so young too. You know, no. <laughs> I need yeah. to ask you guys how to respond to a tweet before we wrap up. Okay, sure. This is gonna be great. Well, I just saw this, and I'm like, I don't know. I don't. I mean, I because I, I've dealt with my. You know, people shit talk me all the time. Mm-hmm. So I put up that tweet about Gottlieb, mm-hmm. which was funny. The meme. That was a good meme. And then, meme, you know, meme, ma'am. I got a lot of people. I got, I got, there are some passionate Phoenix fans that are upset. Other guys asking me why I do this for clicks. Guys, it's Twitter. I'm shit posting. <laughs> uh, CL the goat. Oh, you got says, one from VA the goat. Shut the fuck up, Bart. I'm happy you got fired. You were terrible at your job and have some of the worst takes in all of Wisconsin sports. You are a blubbering drunk moron. There is a reason you will likely die alone. Mm -hmm. How do I? That's abhorrent. I I don't I don't think you do respond to that. I I think you should stop reading my texts to you. (laughs) Like. Would you for the Gottlieb tweet? And how do you feel like I, I've I've sh- I've tweeted shit at people like fuck you and this is stupid. You write like you're a five year old in Cran, Matt Schneidman. I tweeted him that. <laughs> but this is this is how do you like how are you a kind of person that tweets this? Yeah. And if I if I quote tweet him, then people will rally for me, you know. I don't want to do that. I just Blocky. would you say this to me if we were face to face? Oh, why? This is only the type of thing you say. I say be a man and Twitter. call the show tonight. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Should I say think that. before you hit enter? Should I say that? <sighs> kind of pissed. I probably wouldn't. I, pr- I probably wouldn't. Don't block. Don't block him. Here's what you don't do. You don't block him because it pinned at the top of his profile is a, a list of people. He's been blocked by these people. Oh, they really? use. They use blocks as a badge of honor. Is that really what it is? So don't block. Yeah, don't don't give them a block. Mute them if you want. Just ignore. Just ignore them. Yeah. <sighs> you can tell right now he's not taking your advice. Grant. That's probably not what he wanted to hear. No. Fire God, back. This, this it doesn't, doesn't bother me. Incredible. It doesn't. It doesn't. Again, to be clear, it doesn't bother me that someone is saying this to me. It bothers me that someone feels comfortable saying this at all well you're not gonna fix society so <laughs> no you're right why is everyone so mad about the gottlieb thing yeah like, okay so he's he occasionally has an unpopular take he stole someone's credit card in college tony from texas literally last night brought up that well everyone's done something done it dumb in college which is what i said he's like i mean bart winkler shit he threw a brick through a little caesar's window and i'm like he's yeah. not a part of this show at any point in any form right now, but I'm glad I'm sure he'll appreciate that being brought up. I, I don't know. I don't know. It's a little unconventional, but it's UW Green Bay. Since when does everyone give a shit about UW Green Bay? So well, listen, much? I was listening to a national radio show last night in which that was the leading topic. So, well, it's a good, it's interesting. Oh, it's entertaining. Bart's show. It oh. was, and, and honestly, the you had the correct take, I would say, which is you can't do both. You will. You will not be good at either if you try to do both. Well, he I, t- I saw him on Dan Patrick today. He's like, I've had six jobs my whole life. And then he referenced some in living color speech with the Jamaicans. And he's like, I'm the butcher, I'm the bake. I'm and it's like, Doug. You're you're justifying this because of an in living color speech 35 years ago. Yeah. I think the best part of this story. Well, they're not going to be like a top 20 program all of a sudden because of Doug Gottlieb. But you know what? I, I would be there. There was a real point in time, a real 
actual point in time where like, do you remember Bill Simmons pushing to be Bucks GM? Like back in like 2000 and. Yeah. I wrote an article on it. He linked to me. Really? Mm -hmm. I would. Neither of you should be complaining about this because if he does well, all of a sudden, like your career opportunities. No, if he does well, Paul, it shows just how little work we have to put into our real jobs. No, I think it just shows that like coaching and recruiting, like we should probably not treat it like it's that hard. Like, I do like, Bart, you've said this about NFL coaches. Like we do, we put these guys on pedestals. Like how could we ever achieve this level of greatness? Well, Fuck, yeah. they're just, 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 I mean, I have plenty of experience one-on-one talking to these people. Like they are no brighter than any of us being part of this or listening to this. They just like happen to go to that profession, worked their way up organically. It's they're not special humans, man. Like, so I just, I, I don't, I, I think Doug Gottlieb will do just as fine as anyone else would have. It's just, I just don't think it's, you know, that hard to be decent at it or to be passable. No, like I, I we're giving too much credit to the, profession i think it's a niche, but, it's a but this is a college profession. coach they got to recruit they got to be mentors they got to do transfer they got to well, but you're acting like that that's hard oh there's it's, no harder job than a college coach I, i'm not saying it doesn't require work i'm saying it's not hard like no. difficult challenging that there's like some unachievable i, can't, I don't have time to i have to go all right i gotta go too but i want to chew on this more I have to go number two, if I'm being honest. I've needed to oh, for a while. I have so. to go. I have to go. I have to go also. Winkler Wednesday. Goodbye. I have to go die alone. All right. Uh, thank you, guys. Great to be Bye, with fellas. you. Thanks for coming into the Winkler verse.